Okay, so we are recording. This is uh, Hitkin Worldwide's Premier League predictions video. Yes, I am live on my MacBook, so you're getting this recording live on my MacBook, and I am using the Premier League uh, predictor on BBC. Ladies and gentlemen, to give you a predictions video this year, I hope you can all hear me on my mic, because that's what I am on currently. I am currently on my microphone. Anyway... We've got a thing to do. We've got to call predictions. We are going from bottom to top. This is my judgment on... So, a couple of FYIs. I'm going to be basing these predictions off not only current standing, but also what I think will be the end of these squads come the upcoming uh, end of the transfer window on October 7th. Hence, a few of my predictions will be changed. I... I'm also basing it off transfers and which transfers I think will go through, which transfers I think won't go through. And I will also be basing it off uh, who I like this season, who I don't like this season, current form from last season. So I'm going to be basing this off really my thoughts on these teams, but also what I think will damage them, what I think will make them work. So let's begin at the bottom of the pile, ladies and gentlemen, 20th place. So we press add. Ladies and gentlemen, bottom of the pile, in my opinion, right now, I'm going to have to put them there. Do I think they'll finish bottom? No, there's, there's two clear favourites I have for, for bottom. I've got to go West Brom. I actually do like West Brom. I think Matthias Pereira is a good signing. I'm interested in this winger who they signed from West Ham, who's really high rated. I also think I think Bilic is a good manager. Like I don't want to be horrible to West Brom fans, but I think there are stronger teams above them. And there's always that one team out the top uh, of the top three of last season in the EFL Championship who falls, who always goes straight back down. And to be honest, I think Fulham and Leeds have made stronger signings and smarter signings. So with that, I think West Brom are going down. I do like Matthias Pereira. I think this is one I can be wrong on, but there's always that one team out of the championship coming up which struggles. I don't like the signing of Branislav Fafanovic if they get him. I'm sorry he's too old. He was past it before with Chelsea out last year. Still past it now. Brings experience, yes, but get, he'll get killed by pace. And I don't see who's going to get them the goals. So West Brom are getting relegated. Sorry, Baggies fans. 19th, simple answer. This is a simple one. Bye-bye, West Ham. Club's in fucking turmoil. you got a fan base which is after the owners. You, they sold that winger to West Brom, which, uh, got, which upset the fucking club. They're after James Tarkaska at Burnley, who they're probably not going to get. The defence is still a mess. They do have some quality players in Felipe Anderson. In my opinion, he's quality and should look for a move out. Declan Rice are probably going to lose to Chelsea. I think Rice will be signing for Chelsea. Which could help West Ham in January, but... They're, they're in turmoil at the moment. You, can, you can't put them in the bottom three. They're in turmoil. And also, yes, Hallers had a decent preseason, but do you trust them? No. Bye-bye. 18th was tough, because there's a couple of teams here who I think could finish 18th, but i got to go with this one. I like Brighton. I think last year they were one of the happy surprises of the league. I, I had them in the relegation spots last year. But, to be honest, and this is not me shooting at the odds at Brighton fans, but... Where have you strengthened this window? Neil Morpey will probably get you 10 to 15 goals. But you, if I remember, they loaned out Lewis Dunk. Glenn Murray, even though he's gone out on loan, was a leader of the club. Uh, and, and you've lost the leader of the club now. So, like, I think Brighton are in for a tough season. I think they'll just miss out. 17th and staying up by the skin of their teeth, Fulham. I think Fulham will struggle, but I think they've made some smart signings to stay up. I think Mario Lamina will bring some creativity into that midfield with Tom Kearney, who is a stalwart. I think Alexander Mitrovic will grab you 10 to 15 goals. 
and I'm not joking on that. I think the Kenny Tete signing yesterday was really good. Knockout and Calvario on the wings, in my opinion, are proven wingers who have played at both the Championship at high level and Premier League. I think Fulham have the tools to stay up. And I think they will stay up. 16th, Burnley. I mean, it's just Burnley. This is what they do. The, 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 they've not really improved to where I'm going to be like, oh, they're going to finish higher. And plus also the Jeff Hendrick thing is a kind of a big loss to them. But like, they're just that team who is constantly, you, you never fear from finishing in relegation. You never do. And, it's, and Sean Dyche, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the man, the man once he leaves Burnley deserves a bigger job. I know people are going to look at me question nine and all that, but with what he's done there, you have to give him a bigger job in the future. Burnley stay up. 15th. Oof, tough. 15th. I've got to go with this lot. Crystal Palace. I actually love the re-signing of Michi Batsurai. I think it was a smart loan signing. I am putting Crystal Palace 15th because I still think they're going to lose Wilford Zaha. That's no disrespect to Palace fans. I think he's still going to lose Wilford Zaha. If not now in January, you're definitely going to lose him. Like, this ain't me having a dig at Palace fans, but this is me just being honest. I personally think, and this is me as a United fan speaking, because, uh, yes, I am a Man United fan, but don't worry, I'm not going in with this advice instead. If I'm looking at transfer deals, I still think that the Jadon Sancho deal will happen before the end of the window. I would not be surprised if Dortmund came in for Wilfred Saha. I think he fits the team perfectly. I just see a big team coming in for Wilfred Saha, and you'll lose, like, 10 goals. Do I think Palace will get a lot of money and can find a replacement? Yes, absolutely. And I think they will find a replacement probably around January, which will help boost them up to stay up. So, that's my opinion on that. I think, I think Palace are, I think Palace are still a decent team. It's just that, how do you put it? I think Palace are a decent team. I just think it's in a sense that they're, they're going to struggle without Saha for a bit. I, I think his attitude is going to let them down. I think they'll be fast to sign, but I think they'll get a replacement, which helps them stay up. 14th. This one for me, I think it's a perfect spot to put them in. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think right here is the perfect spot to put them in. Leeds United. Marcelo Bielsa leads Leeds United to a top 14 finish, 14th in the league, comfortably away from relegation by at least uh, four spots. Rodrigo's going to get you 10 to 15 goals, leads uh, the pick of the championship. I like the Robin Notch signing. I think they needed a centre back leader. I think with Ben White, I think those two are going to beast. Like, I think those two are going to be very comfortable at the back. I also think. Uh, I think uh, Calvin Phillips in CDM is a good, is a really classy midfielder. Uh, up front, as I mentioned, the Rodrigo signing. I last year they were struggling. Like they had Bamford who can come off the bench and get you a goal too as well. And it's Marcelo Bielsa and those Leeds fans, especially if fans come back later in the season, they'll push Leeds on. I think Leeds will finish 14th, and I think they'll be fairly comfortably safe. 13th place, a team who, in my opinion, has had one of the best transfer windows currently in the in, in the uh, in the in the league. Aston Villa. You've kept Grealish. You've kept McGinn. You've kept the two key midfielders for your squad. You've added with a new goalkeeper in Aaron Ramsdale. Bournemouth was shit last year. We'll fully admit it. But Ramsdale was one of the shining lights of that club. He's a very good keeper. I think he'll be, do really well in Bournemouth. In filler. Ollie Watkins is something I really like. You've got depth at striker with Leslie and Decatur. I think Ollie Watkins, uh, you could also play on the wing. I think he can come in and he can uh, also add Trezeguet, El Ghazi. I, I think filler look a really nice outfit this year. 
I don't see them struggling as much, and I think they'll bang in some goals. I think Phil are going to have a really good season this year. I think I've got I've gone finishing thirteenth. I think they, I think I think also that momentum of staying up the last day will help Filler out huge. Twelfth second season syndrome hits Sheffield United, forcing them to finish lower in the league. But twelfth place is still a really decent finish. Chris Wilder's a great manager. I'm just going to say it. Chris Chris Wilder is one of the top managers in the Premier League at the moment. The man is one of the better managers within the Premier League at the moment. And people might disagree with me on that, but I like a lot what Chris uh, Chris Wilder is doing. You've got Mooset. You've got the other people. You've got Berg, who's a who's a great young lad. You've also got the uh, the new signings as well. Like they keep on, you know, they've a, they've added to. And it, it's the thing they're not even done in the window. Wilder's still after another striker. Rumor rumor has it. It could be, uh, it could be, uh, what's his name, Raheem Brewster of Liverpool. That'd be a very, very nice signing. Ethan Ampadu, the former Chelsea player, great centre-back. Think he'll do really well on the loan deal. Uh, Bogle, more depth in the midfield. Like, Oliver Burke had a really good season. And they're a team. That's something else I should mention. They are very much a team. Are Sheffield United? They are a team who is united. Also, Max Law, I think, is a good signing as well. They're a very united team, a very close knit team. Sheffield United is staying up in twelfth, eleventh place. Ladies and gentlemen, Southampton. Well, Vestergaard, let's talk about the manager. What a bounce back season they had uh, in the second half of the season for getting whacked by Leicester City. They got destroyed by Leicester City. Bad style. But then guess what they did? They rallied. They rallied. And come, come, we we, we got to give it up. Like, we, we just got to give it up to Southampton. Ralph Asahootl rallied this team last season. I think West Ham... I think I think Southampton. Sorry, excuse me. West Ham are going down. I think Southampton have been, uh, in a sense, good, and, and they still have quality players: James Ward, Prowse, Nathan Redmond, like Wesley Hallway. I like as a defender. Southampton have quality players. They're always one of those constant quality teams. Danny Ings. If Danny Ings. Comes in and let's be honest, continues scoring like he did. Then, ladies and gentlemen, be afraid. Ings had one of the hell of a seasons as a striker last season, and I think he'll get another fifteen goal season this season. I think Southampton comfortably eleventh, tenth place. I know my mate Finney's going to be happy about this because this is a shocker. Newcastle. My opinion, they've had the best transfer window in the Premier League so far. I'm going to say it. So far as we currently talk, I think they've had the best transfer week in the it, league in the Premier League window. Jeff Hendrick on a free. Huge midfield depth. I think that was such a shrewd signing from Steve Bruce. Steve Bruce is one of these guys who, even though you've got Mike Cashel, who's a fucking leech on existence, and a fucking twat. I'm going to shoot on that. Steve Bruce has made some brilliant signings. Your back line can be concerning. I fully understand Newcastle fans' opinion on the back line. Like, it can be concerning. I think you're missing a trick for not going back in for Danny Rose. I'll be honest, if you ask me. Because I'm wondering who you're going to be playing at left back. But, and here's the but. Jamal, well, actually, well you got Jamal Lewis, who will fill in at, at the full back role, which is a good thing. Jamal Lascelles, who I do like as a central defender, central de- uh, defender, but the forward line this season of Newcastle is scary. I mean, Jeff Hendrick adds to your midfield, which is really smart. I think he gives you great depth in central midfield with uh, Sh- with Shelby, with uh, who else was it? With uh, Almiron, who I think will go to the number ten because of the wingers. Alan Saint Maximin. 
and, and uh, Ryan Frazier. That shit's scary. Also, they've got Isaac Hayden as well. Ryan Frazier and 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 ASM are on St. Maximum as your wingers. That's a dangerous combination. I think that's one of the more dangerous combos of wingers in the league. And then, oh, by the way, by the way, up front, you can either go with Joel Eaton, Andy Carroll as a plan B, always nice to have a plan B striker, Callum Wilson is a 10 to 15. I know he had an injury hit season last season. But when Callum Wilson is firing, he's a 15 goal striker. And they're going for 20 million. Bargain. Bargain. And he's being fed by Frazier, who he has a connection with, Alan St. Maximum, and possibly Almiron in the number 10 role. I see Newcastle United possibly losing uh, 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 possibly losing games by a, a, a few goals this season. Probably will get blown out in a few games. But I see them scoring a lot more goals this season. Newcastle finished 10th. I, I think they're in for a really good season. And if they get the takeover, then it could be... Th this could be the start of the re-rise of Newcastle United this season. I think they're in for a big season. Ninth place, and now we get into the nitty-gritty, ladies and gentlemen. Now we get into the nitty-gritty. Who do I have finishing ninth? I have, ladies and gentlemen, team I have finishing ninth. It's tough this because there's actually a lot because the top because I think the top nine are, are are actually a lot closer this year. Ninth place though, I'm gonna go with Wolves. Let me explain why I'm picking Wolves in ninth. I love Wolves as a team. I love Nuno Esparito. I know they've signed a, 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 a Fabio Silva. Will that lead to Raul Jimenez leaving in January? If so, I think they're making a mistake. I think Jimenez is a great striker for Wolves. I'm also thinking about Cubs. I think Wolves might focus on Silva or the season. I don't think they've got Europa League this season. I don't think I'd have to double check, but I don't think if they do have, I think that's another reason why you can put them ninth. Can you give me 10 minutes and then we'll go? Thank you. Mum just interrupted me. I just think the Wolves, they haven't strengthened the defence. Like, losing Matt Doherty was a big, big loss to uh, Spurs, who I think will help Spurs huge. I think... Uh, I also just think they could have strengthened more in the midfield and up front. Like, the Fabio Silva signing could be a really good one, but it's a player for the future. I like a lot of Wolves, but I think they'll find it tougher this season. Like, they're one of those teams that could finish a lot higher, but I also could think they could finish as low as 12th. I think Wolves are going to be a team to RVC fade or rise. It's a very difficult one to predict. Eighth place, Leicester City. They've got Europa League. They've got Europa League, first of all. Second of all, they did sign Timothy Castagna, but is he a proper left-back? I don't think he is. I think it's a downgrade off Chilwell. Another point I'm going to make mention of, Jamie Fardy's not getting any younger. You've not really added to your strike foot, to your forward line. You've not really added at centre-back, where I think you needed someone to partner up with Son Ocho, if you don't mind me saying it. Cash for Michael, it might be time to look for a new young goalkeeper next season, Leicester City. I just think, and midf midfield, I think they've got one of the strongest central midfields of Tillemans and uh, and, uh, and Didi. I want to imagine them seeing them bring in a number 10. No, there is still a week or two left in this window. They could do something. But for right now, Leicester City are finishing 8th uh, place. I just... I just think they need more up front to support Fardy. Seventh place, Everton. I think they've had a really strong transfer window. Allen, Ducare, James Rodriguez. Ladies and gentlemen, the impact of Carlo Ancelotti. Need I say more? Now, they've been rumoured with Crystal Palace's Wilfred Saha. 
If they get Wilfred Saha and add him to this Everton team, I could see him go. I, I would put him higher. I'd put him in fifth. Well, I'm just doing this video. I think Everton are going to be a strong team. And I think they are definitely going to be within the thing. I think they're a team to look out for. Like, if they if they land Wilford Sarr, I could see them challenging for the top four. I still think they need to fix the defence a little bit, but Angelotti already is proving his worth in the transfer market, and I think he'll get the team to adapt. Because with Angelotti, it's this way or the highway. Sixth place. Sorry, Neil. Arsenal. This one was easy. William Smart signing. He's still missing something inside the midfield. Aubameyang signing the new contract. Huge. Gabriel. Probably improves your defence centrally. No doubt about it. William Saliba. Probably improves your defence. you probably got a nice young centre-back partnership there. Which you should start the season with. But you probably won't. Fullback wise. I still think there's a lot of questions to be answered about Arsenal. And so maybe for now is developing it. I think, I think Hector Bellerin you could sell. Left back wise. Kieran Tini's back. He feel like a new signing after he missed most of the season with a sh separated shoulder. Goalkeeper wise, you've got Leno. If you're selling Emmy Martinez, I think that's a mistake. I think I think two quality goalkeepers would help you. But up front, a Barry Agstig, twenty plus goals, huge for Arsenal. Nicholas Pepe's drew a big season. I think him and William feeding a Barry Ang will be good for you, like a set off the bench. Will they integrate Meza also? The money-stealing, overrated prick. I'm just going to say that. Shoot comment. I just think they need to destroy her midfield and they've not got it yet. Will they get it in Thomas Party or Aqua? Possibly. But for now, I'm putting them in six. I think if they got Party, they'd be challenging fifth and fourth. But the defence and midfield still worries me about Arsenal. And that's really all I can say about that. Fifth place, Spurs. Had a decent window so far. Joe Hart, good backup for Hugo Lloris. Hoyerberg, I love going next to Sissoko, Lacelso, that midfield spine, uh, Winks. I think he'll help uh, Ndombele, who they've kept. I don't know if he's leaving. Uh, Matt Doherty. Fixes the right back spot because Serge Aurier was slipping and sliding everywhere, but not tackling last season. I think central defense they could have done with a new, could do with another centre back. I think they need a backup striker, which Mourinho said he is working on. And if they get it, I I think they missed the boat going for Callum Wilson. I think they should have gone for Callum Wilson. If I was Spurs, I'd be looking for a backup striker. Like, hmm, if I could give, if I could shoot a name. I would say try Brighton's for solve over the Malpe. Try and find someone with a bit of pace. Like, a backup striker like that, I think would shoot Spurs close to top four. Sun's back. Harry Kane's back. They're going to be up there. And I think they will make a signing or two. And also Bergwijn, who I think will come on further this season. They're going to be close in the top four race. I think the top four race is a lot closer this year. Fourth place, and I'm about to get called biased for this, Chelsea. They've made seven new signings this window. Werner, Siak, Thiago Silva. Like, damn. Uh, Sire on a free, which is a really good signing. Uh, the new goalkeeper, uh, Mendy. Chilwell. And then, uh, this, oh, I'm, I'm again the seventh signing. Crap. I know Chelsea fans, if they were watching this, will eat me out. Werner, Siak. Oh, Havertz. Oh, yes, they've made all those signs. And they could make an eighth signing in Declan Rice from West Ham, who's been rumoured. They've made all those new signings, but there's always a problem with making so many new signings. How does Lampard, in his, in his second season, get them all to adapt into the squad? Defensively, I still think Chelsea's weak. Left-back-wise, even though they've got Chilwell, I still don't trust them. 
central defense. Thiago Silva doesn't have pace anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, he's a classy defender, but he doesn't have pace. I'm just going to say it. He does not have pace. So you mean to tell me I trust Thiago Silva with either Suma, Christensen, or it should be Rudiger. Rudiger's the best central defender they've got in that club. Uh, that Mendy guy they're about to sign over Kepa, we don't know about, enough about him. Is he an improvement? I mean, how can you get any worse than fucking Kepa last season? Midfield-wise, I think if they sign Declan Rice, is that going to force Kante at the squad? And by the way, I think that's a huge mistake. Let me just be honest. Kante's the spine and glue of that Chelsea team. So if you're going to get rid of Kante for Declan Rice... More power to you, Frank Lampard. You'll be the first out the door. And yes, by the way, I'm going to say it. Chelsea start the season badly. Frank Lampard is my favourite to get sacked first this season. So, keep eyes on Chelsea. I think they'll finish fourth. But, could I see them finishing? And could I see them fading and falling? Absolutely. Third place. Pains me to do that. We've only signed Van der Beek. I think Smalling's going to leave. I think the Sancho deal will happen. I, I, I'm i sorry. There's no way the UK press comes out and says they've agreed personals and all that without United not putting a bid in and getting him a few days ago. I'm sorry. That deal's going to happen. Probably be after the first game of the season, though. I would like a backup left back. There's been the rumours about the Rujo, I think. He's currently recovering from an injury, so he do this. Which is why I think it's gone quiet. I think that signing was going to happen if he weren't injured. So I think that signing happens as well. If none of those signing, if, if the Rujo signing and the Sancho signing don't come off, I'd easily put United under Chelsea and I would keep them close to Spurs. I, I, I would put United fourth. But I think those deals will happen. I think Van der Beek with Pogba and Fernandez is one of the scariest midfield trios in the league. And you can also swap out, and then when you need a closer game out, you go to Matic. The front three, Greenwood, who's been a bit of an idiot recently, Rashford and Martial come the end of the season with firing in goals left, right and centre. They were doing that all season. Fulham, by the way, just signed earlier Anina on loan from Torino. Another good signing from Fulham. So I'm I'm very happy I've kept them at my bottom four. But I think United will improve. I think centre of defence. I wouldn't be surprised if United went for Open Mancano in January or next summer. Which will push them, in my opinion, into the top two. Now, if they got the central defender and got Open Mancano last day of the window and did a madness, I think United could challenge for the league. I don't think you, I don't think my team's far away. Do I trust Solskjaer that we'll win street we run? Yes, absolutely. I would like United to win their first trophy this year in a cup. And finish top three. I think Chelsea. The, it's just so many players coming in. I think you should only be aiming to sign four or three players, four or five players, especially during this COVID era. You don't want to sign seven or eight because you have to work them all into the team. I'm sorry, it's the truth. Second place. I hate doing this. Why? Simple answer: Why? Fernand Torres, I like. He's your replacement for Leroy Sané. You've not replaced David Silva. I'm sorry, Phil Foden ain't no David Silva. Phil Foden will be a good, great, really good midfielder, but is he David Silva? Hell no. Strike-wise, Aguero's not getting any younger. Gabriel Jesus, I don't believe in enough. What, what Man City should do right now is go and bid for Harry Kane. Go and test Spurs resolve. And bid for Harry Kane. Maybe even offer... Maybe even offer... Uh, someone in 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 a swap deal, maybe uh, go in a swap deal, because I think that would benefit both clubs. Because I think City have a team style based around Harry Kane to, to come in a striker, but that ain't even the main problem with City. I think spine wise, I think Fernandinho's not getting any younger. He's a uh, he's. I think this year going to be one of the major letdowns. Also, centre back. Yes, you brought in Nathan Atkin. Really nice signing. Very pleased for you. You've not got a leader in that defence to go with Laporte. I'm sorry, Laporte and Atkin could be a first-team partnership, but they're both left-sided defenders. You need a rock. Someone who will come in and know immediately, yeah, that's going to do this team huge. I think if they got Koulibaly, 
they really will be my. I I would I would put them as my favorites currently if they had Kula Bali to win the league. They don't. They need to get in. Because I'm sorry, left back wise, they're still missing a left back. Benjamin Mendy was too hurt, but I think Sinchenko was good. Right back wise, Carl Walker isn't getting any younger, but he's still one of the best right backs in the league. I think City finished second, which means my winners of the Premier League season, once again, this fucking pains me as a Man United fan. Liverpool. Yuck! I do that with a bit of a scent, I will admit, but. How can you not pick them? Van Dijk, Robertson, Trent. Wish they would have signed another centre-back. They've also got that Greek lad who are, who's a complete unknown to me. Rumour has it they're going to get Thiago. Upgrades the midfield. Even if Juan Adam leaves, you're getting a world-class player in for a, a world-class player. Because Juan Adam was a world-class last season. Got Oxley chamberlain who's a good squad player coming back from injury. Naby Keita in that midfield. Coming, you know, in Fabinho, the midfield leader. Henderson, who was great. The front three. Firmino, who I actually thought was weak. I think I think they could have made I think they could go for a better striker, to be honest, a better centre forward. But Manny and Salah. They just run the show. The one thing that will stop Liverpool from winning the league is injuries this season. Especially if they lose Van Dyke to a big injury earlier on. If they lost Van Dyke for like two months. I think it's anyone's league to win. I think that's the one player, though, and that's the main danger towards Liverpool. I think if they lose Virgil van Dijk, I think they're done. By the way, these were the official Premier League predictions. <laughs> but yeah, I think if they lose Virgil van Dijk, they're done. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is my predicted table. Liverpool first, City second, United third, Chelsea fourth, and then the rest you can all see. I just overall think Liverpool will win the league. Predictions for the FA Cup and Carabao Cup. I'm going to go Man United to win the FA Cup. Carabao Cup, I'm actually going to say Spurs finally pick up a trophy. I think they'll pick up the uh, Carabao Cup. Champions League wise, you, I am I am going to go over Champions League retain. I am not batting against the Bayern Munich juggernaut. They added Real Sané. Europa League wise, maybe keep an eye on Arsenal actually winning that this year. Because I actually think an English team will win something in Europe. That's it for me. These have been my Premier League predictions and other predictions. I think favourite manager to get sacked first will be Frank Lampard on that prediction. Um, present surprise of the season will be Newcastle. I've been hit kid worldwide. These have been my Premier League predictions. We'll see you next time. <laughs>